Hey, what's up, peeps? Well, it's Tuesday night, sometime in January 2022. Hope everyone's doing well tonight. I'm actually kind of delayed making this video. I was going to talk about woodworking, and I've been so inspired that, uh, as many of you know, over the last few days I uh, have been wanting to make a video trying to vocalize how to inspire people to take up woodworking as something more than just a hobby, but maybe even a career. I worked in construction for 15 years or so, on and off, and in that time I learned a lot. I worked uh, all the way up to finished carpentry and doing really fine woodworking, cabinetry, and in the end my back gave out on me, so I kind of stepped away from it for years. And as I mentioned recently, I came back into it, and uh, you never really go away from it, but I filmed the whole process of pulling out my table saw and all my saws and like sanding all the rust off, and I really didn't take very good care of my table saw. It was sitting out there in the elements. Uh, it was covered, but anyway, another story altogether, because I'm going to put eventually all these videos together to show with you, share with you all, but this thing right here is a planer. This is a Stanley number four. These have been around for probably a hundred years, or m well, m more than a hundred years. But I mean, this particular model is has been around for at least a hundred years. It's very simple. It has a little lockdown mechanism. You pull that off, and then it has this blade in here, and this blade basically rides right level with the bottom of this, allows it to protrude just a little bit. Just enough to where you can cut off a small slice at a time, a small sliver. And uh, I was going to say, this would be a tool I would recommend for somebody. This might not be a carpenter's tool that somebody would recommend for people, for a beginner. A tool like this can get you to fall in love with the wood. It cuts off these beautiful, beautiful strips. I had a couple around here. Here's one beautiful pieces of koa. This is common koa, but uh, I was using it to make my guitar. And as I mentioned, I've uh, also used things like paduke. This is one of my favorite woods, and if you look at the way it glistens, it kind of changes like a hologram in the light. This is uh, one of the meditation benches that I made a long time ago, and it goes with the table I have, and they are phenomenal. But, uh, I don't know, I really love working with the elements. I want to start learning how to work with metals. Uh, I've always wanted to learn how to weld and learn how to do jewelry and fine details stuff. Um, I've worked a little bit with stone, and I actually do have a lapidary set up, and I've made some, you know, various cabochons, which are like, you know, stone centerpieces, things like that. But as far as the guitar and stuff, like taking up carpentry, this is what I've come up with so far. This is the uh, the beast. Boom, 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 boom. It's going to be an awesome bass. I have uh, basically have it clamped together to hold it together right now. As you can see, the back of the neck's not shaped yet. It's rounded, but not to the degree that I want it to be. It has a standard p bass style head, all set up for hardware. And my friend came over today, and we made these fretboards. I'm going to unclip this to show you here because it has a channel going through the neck. That's where the truss rod is going to go. And it slips right in here into this opening. Then there will be the pickups down here. Think, and, oh, it's heavy. <laughs> and then it'll be routed out for whatever different controls I want. But more than that, I'd like to, in the back, clean it up a little bit, make it Maybe even router out a long channel around it just to take some of the weight out. But man, it's it's a lot of work to router out this solid stuff. So, uh, my friend came over today and we milled out a big board of this. Uh, this is uh, uh, Bra Brazilian rosewood. This is considered some of the best fretboard material in the world. Uh, it was like $80 for a board. We ended up getting six out of it. And you can see those little lines along it. Each one of those is where a fret will go. And this sits right at, up at the bottom, you know, the base of the guitar, where it meets the body. 
all the way up to the frets, which are farther spaced out. For those who don't know, they get narrower as they go up, closer together anyway. And then here's where the bridge goes, and then the rest of this will be cut off, and it will go right on top of this thing, like so. It'll all match up. Each one of these will be cut deeper. That's just scored right now. Then we have some fret wire coming. We're going to put that in there. And the thing is, when we started this, I was like determined to make a guitar. Like, I know I can do it, but I know I'm going to need practice. And uh, we've been making... Since I was a kid, you know, I've had a fascination with making things out of wood and creating things and crafting things. But it wasn't until I got older that I was fortunate enough to work for a guy, uh, a couple different guys actually, that took me under their wing and really showed me what to do. So I understand that not everyone can go out and just do uh, woodworking of any type they want. I have a lot of different tools that I had collected over the years. And I worked for a designer guy that had some money and he actually <laughs> would... Uh, really buy me a lot of tools. I'd be like, I don't have the tool to do this job. And he'd take me down the store and be like, let's get it and you can keep it. Because he was making a ton of money off of what he was doing. He didn't care. But uh, fortunately that benefited me because now I'm hanging on to biscuit joiners and different drills and saws and things that I, planers, things that I probably wouldn't have bought on my own. But um, the point being here that you don't need all those tools. You really only need some basic hand tools. A planer is not going to do it, obviously. But look, I watched a guy on YouTube build a phenomenal, beautiful guitar by hand without power tools, any power tools, and he did it with a cast on one hand. He did it with a cast on one arm. He used he he built a guitar one-handed. So if he can do it. Without power tools, with one hand, I'm sure that any of us could probably pull it off. It was pretty, it's a masterpiece, you should check it out. But anyhow, that's my ran, ramble about woodworking. I think it's, I think it's something that everybody should dabble in. And uh, especially the younger generation should really look more into doing some of these things. People still need custom cabinets. People still do want custom furniture. And um, I kind of... I think for a while it got drowned out, for me anyway, I saw what was happening to the cabinet market and the fine woodworking market. Places like Home Depot could just get Chinese cabinets in and outsell you, you know, you know, $50, $100 cabinets. You know, you can't make a living selling $100 cabinets. I mean, it's just, anyway, uh, but if you do finer woodworking custom stuff, which I'm hoping to do more of soon, then, uh. It can be lucrative and it can be satisfying. And I think that's the most important thing is that it's satisfying. That we enjoy enjoy what we do. So, that's my ramble. And I'm out. Talk to you next time. Be well. I'm going to go eat some beef stew. Bye.